Okay. I'm going to call this video 10,000 Ways You Can Beat a Dead Horse. Because everybody keeps asking this question because of one of the top, by top I use quotation marks, YouTube photographers keeps telling people that uh, sticking full frame lenses on DX crop sensors uh, has uh, less resolution. Now, it is a fact that if we're going to print out an 8x10, 20x30 using the exact same lens, whatever that lens is, from a full frame camera to a DX camera, let's assume it's a 24 megapixel DX and a 24 megapixel FX. Okay, it doesn't really matter. We do have to enlarge the DX image a wee bit more. Yep, we do. So, yeah, so there is enlargement, more enlargement, not substantial. More enlargement going on there, so we're not even talking about that. The premise is, and everybody keeps uh, getting deluded into believing by this video, there's actually a couple of videos like this, where this nonsense is uh, propagated like unicorns and leprechauns, that a full frame lens on a, let me give a quote, and this person even posts on uh, Diaper and P Review when he, when he hears about this, the person says, Ah, oh, but all those uh, pro, pro zoom FX lenses that we love, it turns out that they're not up to the resolving, uh, a resolving power of the high pixel densities of the DX bodies. Well, this is absolute BS. Uh, let me ask you something, Mr. Uh, famous YouTube photographer. Um, if you are correct, then every professional photographer out there, and let's just take National Geographic, for example, Okay, and uh, I'm pretty sure you don't even have the skill chops that comes anything close to any of the pro shooters that are out crawling in the mud, hunting grizzly bears, or, you know, climbing up the side of a mountain, hanging upside down with a Nikon and a lens to take a picture of, like, a rare buzzard. You know, these sort of people. Since these people are using full-frame lenses, you know, oftentimes big-ass, expensive uh, prime lenses, like 400 millimeter 2.8s, 500. They're using Mun gimbals on tripods. You know, you got some guy out there with a 600 millimeter f/4, you know, big-ass $10,000 lens on a DX crop sensor camera. You know, if these people at this level of professional photography are using full-frame lenses. On DX crop bodies, I'm pretty sure you don't know what the hell you're talking about, Mr. Professional Photographer. Okay? This notion that full frame lenses on DX crop bodies are less sharp, let's forget about the enlarging factor that obviously does go on because you know, you're printing out an 8x10 or 20x30 from a DX. You have to enlarge it a wee bit more for the DX uh, image. Uh, then you do the FX. We're not talking about that. This person's position is that full frame lenses on DX crop bodies are not a sh This is horse bucky nonsense, baloney, malarkey, hooey, fooey nonsense. Um, and additionally so, uh, you see, what happens in wildlife photography and sports in action is that uh, there is a boundary. You know, the animals will not let you get that damn close because they're going to run off. And in sports photography, there's this neat little thing called a guardrail. Where you know the players are out there, uh, you know, playing with the ball, kicking it, whatever they're doing with the ball, softball, football, baseball, whatever hell of ball they're messing with. You know, with animals, you got the same issue with sports. You have a barrier, you can't get any closer. And 99 times out of 100, you have to crop the piss out of that shot. The professional photographers, and I mean the real ones, are using full frame lenses. You see, the way it works is that there are no professional full frame, uh, excuse me, there are no professional DX lenses. And there's a reason why nobody makes DX lenses like, you know, this is Nikon's newest 300mm f2.8 DX lens. You know, these lenses don't exist. There's no such thing as a DX 400mm, 300mm, 600mm, 500mm. You know, they don't exist for a reason. They don't exist for a reason. This has nothing to do with the size of the sensor. And by the way, the the huge advantage of a DX crop sensor, you see the way it works is when uh, you're doing sports photography, unless it's indoor sports where it's kind of dark, you have to bump up the ISO. You're dealing with sufficient lighting. Let's take a look at uh, a full frame sensor and a DX sensor. Up here we have the full frame sensor. Let's say we got four photo sites in an area of 0 .0005 millimeters squared. And the same thing on a DX sensor 
this is just one example. We have uh, six photosites instead of four on the full frame in the exact same uh, 0 0.0005 millimeter square area of a sensor. In other words, the sensor is huge. We're just lo looking at a tiny, tiny, tiny micro. You see, <clears throat> like you take a picture of a bird or a sports player, a ball player, a grizzly bear, you know, an eagle, whatever the hell it is, a, a speckle-breasted and a speckle-breasted endangered woodpecker from a thousand yards. You know, you're going to have to crop the hell out of the shot. For every little bit of the sensor at this scale, there is more translational information here. You see, there's six. There are uh, two more bits of translational information here. Now, this is just one poor example. You know, oftentimes it's actually a lot higher than this. You have more translational information here on the DX sensor than you do the FX. If you crop a full frame sensor to the size of a DX, and often in wildlife and sports photography, you're doing more than that, then all you've got is a DX sensor with a whole lot less megapixels. Uh, I think, I forget what the Nikon D810 crop to DX is. Someone could look it up. It's like, uh, what is it, 18 or something like that? Megapixels? I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But any time you have to crop your full frame sensor shot, sports, action, wildlife, all these uh, types of photography, that you are cropping 99% of the time, there's not as much information there. You just end up cropping the hell out of a shot which has lower translational information per the image. In other words, there are less dots of information on that endangered speckled breasted woodpecker you took a picture of with a 500 millimeter at a thousand yards, for example. The people think that... I'll give you one example. Someone says, uh, yeah, uh, full-frame lenses are uh, absolutely, on a DX crop sensor, absolutely a photographic drawback of small sensors, which is absolutely not true. A 24-megapixel DX sensor is more demanding on the lens than a 24-megapixel FX sensor. Really? Where do people... You see, I, people got to stop believing in this nonsense. There, this nonsense comes from uh, one or two people, one person, really who is getting this nonsense off of a DxO mark. Oh, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Full frame lenses on DX crop sensors do not make for a less fuzzy image. They do not make for a worse image. They do not make for an inferior image. Most professionals out there are using full frame lenses on DX crop sensors, and there are no huge ass prime DX lenses for your DX camera. They're, they don't exist for a reason. Everything in exposure is gain and time. Let's understand something else. Gain and time. Time is, of course, shutter speed. Gain is of two different varieties. Okay, gain, aperture. A lot of gain, wide open aperture, little gain. Closed aperture, f22, for example. This is the other sort of gain. Per given unit of time, these big old photosites, even though there are a few of them down, down here, okay, these have better gain. They're bigger eyeballs for capturing more light per given period of time. And the light is a charge, by the way, okay? If anybody thinks that a uh, camera is collecting photons and you are drunk or smoking crack or both, okay? <laughs> Well, the way a sensor works, the way that little silicon wafer in the back of your camera works, it works off of something called <clears throat> charge. Charge. Electricity, right. Over a given period of time, captures a better charge, which means it has better signal-to-noise ratio. Then the exact same area down here, these little bitty uh, photosites, which receive less of a charge and have worse signal-to-noise ratio over a given period of time. However, noise has certain frequencies. This is a known fact. And SNR firmware and AD converters have drastically improved but here's the point. Photosite gain, and this has more gain per unit of time than it does down here. Photosite gain doesn't matter for crap in professional work if you are A, using any sort of artificial illumination speed light studio strobe, or B, where you don't have to worry about uh, having insufficient illumination for less gain on the DX crop sensor because you are shooting wildlife out in the daylight.
or there's plenty of light and you don't have issues with uh, slightly slower shutter speed, you don't have issues with camera shake, well at longer focal length you have issues with shake, but that has to do with focal length, it doesn't have to do with gain and time. All exposure is gain and time. So if you're shooting that endangered speckled breasted woodpecker out in a 2 p.m. illumination and it's beating down on that pretty little woodpecker, you do not have an issue with slightly less gain on the DX crop sensor. So <clears throat> my, my logic and reasoning is that uh, hardcore professional photographers for like National Geographic and other magazines that are using full frame lenses on DX crop sensors, they might know more than a desk jockey <clears throat> who is telling everybody and confusing newbies that uh, full frame lenses uh, have issues on DX crop sensors and crop sensor cameras and this is palpably nonsense. It's hooey, it's fooey, it's unicorn farts, leprechaun, you know, leprechaun footprints, pixie dust, it's hogwash. So let's please stop propagating this nonsense. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.